The following is a presentation of TNT Sports. The chase began last night. At Richfield Coliseum, Brad Doherty poured in 40 points. Mark Price knocked out another 35. But the Cavaliers couldn't knock out the Nets in the red-hot Drazen Petrovic until the game's final minute. Steal by Hot Rod! Hot Rod heading to the hole! And he'll dunk it home! On to the Garden in the first round rematch. Celtics and Pacers, no, Larry Bird didn't play. Yes, Boston still won. Reggie Lewis was the spark, a 36-point night, as the Celtics pulled away late to win by 11. In Oakland, George Carl's Sonics pulled off the night's only upset, an eight-point win over Golden State. Ricky Pierce, a veteran of the playoff wars, scored 20 of his 28 in the second half. So much for the Warriors' home court edge. It was business as usual in Portland. The Blazers scorched the Lakers. Clyde was back. I was moving super fast. I was speeding. And uh, the thing was, it was just great to get back out on the floor, just to play again. It just feels wonderful. Tonight, our playoff journey continues with a doubleheader. We'll take you to Chicago Stadium where the champs are licking their chops. Michael and the Bulls begin their quest for back-to-back -back titles, and it could be an open and shut case. They open with a best of five against Miami. The Heat make their first postseason appearance. For Ronnie Cycli and company, that's a tough draw. And then it's on to Salt Lake City. The Jazz moved into a new building and promptly set a franchise record for home wins. They were 37-4. Malone and Stockton await the challenge from L.A. Larry Brown brings the Clippers to town. The first playoff appearance for that franchise in 16 years. We'll see how long they hang around. We have got that playoff swagger on TNT. Tonight, the NBA playoffs hit full stride. Good evening, everybody. Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. Eight teams played last night. The other eight go tonight. You'll see the Bulls hosting Miami. And later, the Clippers and the Jazz from Salt Lake City. And, of course, we'll keep you posted on the Knicks and the Pistons and the Suns and the Spurs with bonus coverage as the night progresses. And joining me once again here in the studio, Sixers head coach Jim Lynham. And, folks, if you went to bed last night, you weren't around for the whole doubleheader, Portland breezed and Seattle surprised. Your thoughts? Uh, Portland came big time out of the gate, Arnie. They... Uh were running early and really gave the Lakers no chance to get in the game. It was over by halftime. The Sonics, Golden State. Sonics, a surprise. Uh, I think that the sh pressure has really shifted. Uh, you can win that first game in a five-game set on the road. You put the pressure on the other team. Now tonight, Chicago and Miami. That doesn't take much explanation. No, not really, but uh, don't uh, put the onus so much on Miami. Chicago versus anybody at this point, uh, monumental chore. Uh, inexperienced uh, Miami really uh, going uphill. Intriguing out west. You got the Clippers in Utah tonight. Uh, I think this has the potential to be a very, very very competitive series because I do not see the Clippers as your normal number seven team. They've been playing extremely well since Larry took over. That'll be game two tonight. We'll be back at the half with updates and highlights, but right now sit back, enjoy a first round doubleheader. The Heat and the Bulls followed by the Clippers and Jazz on TNT. Game regular season wait. Bulls fans are right where they want to be, jammed into Chicago Stadium, ready to root their defending champs. The Bulls' mighty impressive two-year run, 143 victories, only 38 losses, and a point differential of almost 10 and a half per game. They went through the opposition in the regular season like a hot knife through butter. Dick Versace. I don't see many chinks in the armor of the champs. Well, I don't know how you can take advantage of them, but there are two. They're at the bottom of the league in free throw percentage and in three-point shooting. From a Miami standpoint, it has been a steady climb over the past four years. The Miami Heat coming into the league and winning 15 in its initial season. Then they jumped it by three, then by six, then the big push, 14-game improvement to 38 victories and the final spot in the East. But, J.D., it's such a brand-new experience for these Miami Heat players. It'll be interesting to see what happens. It's a new experience in the playoffs, but Coach Kevin Lockery told us before the game they are used to pressure basketball. Uh, we have really had a stretch run of the last month of the season, which was invaluable experience for our young team. We're the youngest team in the NBA. Every night was a big game, right down to the last game of the season with Boston at Boston. I would like to see us come as focused as we were against the Celtics. I thought that was a great game for us, even though we didn't win it. I don't think the pre I think we've overcome all the jitters of a, a playoff stretch. Well, I hope Kevin Lockery can carry that confidence across to his team. I look for a lot of early timeouts from the Miami Heat. 
NBA playoffs roll on on TNT from the west side of Chicago. The Chief Eagle starting lineups tonight for game one. The visiting Heat with Glenn Rice and Grant Long at the forward spots. Ronnie Cycli in the middle. Brian Shaw and Steve Smith in the backcourt. And the Chicago Bulls with that familiar lineup. Pippen, Grant, Cartwright, Paxson, and Jordan. This is a veteran tested Bulls team. 618 playoff games, Dick Versace, to 25 for the Heat. Well, that's an awesome differential there. And Kevin Lockery showed a lot of bravado in his opening comments. Uh, I took a team, the Indiana Pacers, that had been to the playoffs a couple other times, but it hadn't been but about six years. Now we see Kevin Lockery and Phil Jackson getting preparing their teams. But the point being, this is a team that's never been to the playoffs, and it's really a different different concept for them because what they don't realize is yes they've been playing hard as Kevin pointed out in the last few games of the regular season but they have no idea what they're in for when the when the Dobermans are turned loose by Chicago I, I I'm afraid that we're going to see an opening and I hope not for their sake but I'm afraid we're going to see an opening like we saw against Portland and L.A. the other night the Bulls have never lost to Miami as you see by that graphic four of those victories coming this year but the Heat were very competitive in three of the games in fact one of them was a two point game in Miami this uh, Miami team as Kevin Lockery told us prior to the telecast tonight the youngest team in the NBA and so it was that stretch run in which they were in contention all the way to well the final day of the season that he feels is going to help them have uh, some kind of experience in terms of playing under pressure. Well, J.D., I look for Kevin Lockery to do all kinds of cute, clever things. One of the things I anticipate is that he's going to play a small lineup, maybe with Glenn Rice at the power forward and Grant Long at the center and uh, almost anyone else, uh, Keith Askins or one of the guards at the small forward, trying to get an offensive team in there that can put a lot of points on the board. Small teams in the past have given this team a little bit of trouble, but only on occasion. The Bulls went 15 and 2 on their way to the championship in the last playoff season back in 91. They have also won 16 of their last 17 playoff games here in Chicago Stadium. Well anytime you have a guy that has Glenn Rice on the other team the player that he's become the interior leader that he's become for this Miami Heat team and the fact that he's such an unbelievable three point shooter. This guy has made more three point shots this season than nine other NBA teams. We have a delay because of a malfunction of the shot clock and game clock above the basket. Which is by the way to the left as you look at the court with our television picture. So it's the defensive goal of the Chicago Bulls. The other clocks are working properly over the other basket. It's interesting that the Miami Heat should become the first team in this recent expansion group to make it because they are playing against the only team in NBA history to make the playoffs its first year in existence. And as we go through this list you'll see that fourth places them about in the middle of the pack. There were a couple other teams uh, that got in early earlier and then other teams that got in in their fourth year. So they're really a blueprint I think for expansion teams in the future. There's no question that Billy Cunningham Lewis Chappelle at all have done a tremendous job of building this team. They built it through the draft. They built it with young players and they built it with good character of the players. Uh, the players that have been a problem for them uh, like Sherman Douglas they moved them on and I think that's what you got to do if you want to eventually sniff in the championship you got to build a team around good character. Daryl Garrettson has made the decision to get this game underway and the shot clock and game clock above the one basket to the left as you look at that picture will be worked on while the game progresses. Horace Grant guarded by Grant Long. Yeah. 
Ten seconds. Pippen juggles. And Miami comes up with a steal. It's Rice to the ball. And now Steve Smith, the point guard on this Miami Heat club. And the outside shot won't drop for Shaw. I really would have liked to have seen Brian Shaw let some other members of the team touch a little leather in such a crucial first possession. It's not a bad idea. Just let him touch the ball one time. You know, before you put that shot up. That's part of that inexperience, although Shaw has the most experience of any starter, the only playoff experience of any starter. Michael Jordan turning it in. And the tip is also missed. The ball belongs to the Heat. And Brian Shaw has got the assignment of guarding Michael Jordan. He's going to have his hands full all night. He's normally used to guarding point guards. Most of his experience in the league has been in guarding point guards. He's guarding Smith. Smith is a point guard, but he's 6'8. Miami with a big guard tandem, Smith and Shaw. Ten on the shot clock. Shaw against Paxson. Rice and Jordan spears the rebound. We've played over a minute, no score. Chicago in a hurry. And Scotty Pippen breaks the ice. Well, Glenn Rice took a very tough off balance shot. I think the nervousness of the Miami Heat is normal and expected. And if they're going to get over it, they've got to maybe break the defense down a little bit with some passing and some movement. Smith in the post, got Jordan in the air. Now Grant Long. And Jordan another rebound. And again, the Bulls looking to score in a hurry. Paxson pulls up. On the rebound, a loose ball foul whistle against Chicago. Scotty Pippen. So the Miami Heat 0 for 3 to start out, but Chicago only 1 for 4. I think I see a little swagger on the uh, faces of the Chicago Bulls. Like uh, maybe they've got some preconceived notions about this game. Long missing. Jordan ahead to Pippen. into Horace Grant and Miami comes up with its second steal. Brian Shaw to the hoop and the Heat have their first playoff points ever. That'll make them feel better. That'll loosen everybody up and they'll get their confidence. Nine and a half minutes left to go in the first quarter. John Paxson with ten on the shot clock. Michael Jordan over Rice. Book it. Michael Jordan had back problems. He injured his back on the first play of the game, the final game of the regular season against the Pistons. Well, this is a matchup inside. They're trying to take advantage of the fact that John Paxton is guarding Brian Shaw inside. And the backup, B.J. Armstrong, they will also be a big advantage for the Miami Heat. They seem to want to go inside, take advantage of that. We talked about that with Kevin Lockery today at the shoot around. Jordan missing after hanging the shot up there and the ball out of bounds. It belongs to Miami. I thought that Kevin uh, in the shoot around downplayed that. He also downplayed the fact that they might post up Steve Smith as well. It's Smith at the controls against Jordan. Quick drive by Smith. Got bumped. Count the basket. And the Miami Heat with the early lead. Well, Steve Smith is some kind of rookie coming off a very difficult year. You see how he finishes the drive there? That's a good sign when a rookie can finish. When he finishes in the playoff, it's a better sign. In the regular season, Smith was a 75% free throw shooter. That three point play puts the Heat in front. 7 4. Scotty Pippen against Rice, and he is fouled. Pippen to shoot two. Glenn Rice on the foul. That's the first foul whistled against the Heat. Well, J.D., I think that's the matchup that's going to be most troublesome for the Miami Heat, only because it's their top scorer. It's their interior leader. It's their inspirational leader. It's the guy that they're going to count on uh, to put up a lot of points. He had a 
He had a game against Orlando to get this team into the playoffs where he almost single handedly carried them on their backs. He had looked in the mirror the night before and said hey look I want this team in the playoffs. I guess I'm going to have to be the man and he came up with 46 big ones against Orlando. Pippen and Jordan who lead the Bulls in scoring have all of the Chicago points to this point. Shaw turns it in. Nice drive by Brian Shaw. He's got six for the Heat. Scotty Pippen around a current right screen. Sightly switches out. The Bulls punch in to the mismatch. Current right over Rice actually leaned on it. Just as Kevin Lockery told us, it's going to be single coverage inside on the post. He's not going to be trapping and having long rotations out of those traps. Quick drive by Smith. The ball punched outside out of bounds to the Bulls with 7.47 left. Miami claiming that it was the Bulls who touched it last. And they win the argument. Oh, good for David Jones. He went over there and overruled the call. That's a good sign. So the Heat with the one point lead. Smith. Guarded by Jordan. This has not been a quick start by the defending champs. But in the head to head meetings this year, the Heat were very competitive in the first quarter of their four games. An offensive foul whistled against Brian Shaw. Oh, my. I see why Brian Shaw is not happy. That was like a college flop. I hate to see that call. That's we'll have first. him flopping all over. And the Bulls in possession, needing a hoop to get the lead. Four of ten for the Heat. Chicago three of seven from the field. The Bulls on the perimeter looking inside and finding Jordan out front. Ronnie Sykley, the Heat rebound. Steve Smith guarded by Paxson. Sykley against Cartwright. Ronnie Sykley off the glass, and Miami steps out to a three-point advantage. Well, Ronnie Sykley is the kind of center that can give Bill Cartwright problems. He can score inside. He's got the quick turnaround off the glass. Let's Super. go outside and shoot. Super pass by Cartwright. Jordan missed, but drew the foul. He'll shoot two after this timeout. 6.51 left to go in the opening quarter. The Heat by three. Chicago Stadium, it's the upstart Heat finding themselves out to a three point advantage early in the game eighteen thousand six seventy six looking on well in all honesty I thought I detected a little swagger on the on the countenances of the Bulls a little uh, overconfidence maybe a little you know a little extra uh, shake and bake thinking things going to be easy that the defense by the by the heat wouldn't be there but it was uh, they're going to have to work for their baskets and I think the heat has come out and and clearly demonstrated that they're going to do that and they're here to stay for the duration. Kevin Lockery has made uh, I think a major decision here at this point with two fouls he's leaving Rice in the game. With 651 left in the quarter. Michael Jordan gets another he can bring the Bulls to within one. Well, you know there's a couple of theories on that one is you want to get him out immediately and then you can get him back in in the second quarter and then take him out when he gets the third. He, he may decide to play play him all the way up until he gets a third because he gets three in this half anyway. I think uh, it underscores his thinking that they must have a good first quarter. And so far things are going well for them. Here's Smith against Jordan. Shot clock is at five. The shot clocks and game clocks working at both ends. That's Glenn Rice. His first two points and the heat in front by three. Well, that was unbelievable. He shot that shot and never reached down to cock it. He's got such strong wrist. Shot it with the ball over his head. Like a volleyball tap. Here's Jordan on the pirouette and Cartwright is open. Shaw around a cycling screen. Now to cycling. He's a little high off the glass and Sykley with a foul as he took down Horace Grant. Three team fouls on the Heat. Ronnie Sykley with his first. Oh, that's a good aggressive foul. He went after the ball. Clearly a foul. Horace Grant took a good shot. 
On a punch out of that Miami backcourt. Six of those points from Brian Shaw. Cartwright finds Pippen, but Scotty Pippen lost the handle. One of the things Kevin Lockery told us at the shoot around was he wasn't going to get rid of his transition game. He was going to keep it in there, but I haven't seen much of it as of yet. But then there haven't been too many opportunities. Glenn Rice against Pippen. A three try by Rice. Book it. Glenn Rice with the last five for the Heat. They open up a four point lead. Pippen making his move on Rice. Horace Grant over Long. Grant gets it back. He's relentless on the offensive boards, but it's Long with the rebound, and Miami looking to extend. Well, Grant Long could easily be a candidate for the most improved player in the NBA this year. He can make a strong case. He's improved his stats in every category. Smith off the drive and a foul called. Scotty Pippen with his second. And let's see how Phil Jackson plays it. I don't see any movement on the bench down there. That's interesting that he's electing to play it as liberally as he is. A sluggish start by the defending champs. Jordan the steal. Packs it ahead to Pippen. Blowing pass right. Chicago defensively, they are so good in transition. Boy, they can turn that steal into a quick two. Now Shaw doubled. Long to Cycling. Good patience, good recognition by the Heat. See, the more that you do against the Chicago Bulls that is not predictable, the better off you're going to be. Jordan's alley-oop hits the glass. He'll get a shot attempt. Grant Long scoring on the break. And the Heat back to a six-point lead. Scotty Pippen under the Grant. There have been a couple of major defensive breakdowns by the Heat. The Bulls have had guys under the basket. Pippen juggled a pass away that would have been a dunk. Well, it looks like it's the Chicago Bulls that are a little tight and not the Miami Heat, which is a major surprise. Here's Rice over Pippen. And Horace Grant the rebound. A hoop makes it a two-point game. Paxson dancing on the dribble. I'm really surprised they don't give Scotty Pippen the ball, clear out for him, and let him take Glenn Rice off the dribble. It was Jordan over Shaw instead, and Jordan has six. And it really wouldn't matter who's guarding Glenn Rice. Why not clear aside for whoever Glenn Rice is guarding and take it to him? Kevin Lockery takes time with a little over three minutes left in the first quarter. Here's what makes the Chicago defense effective. Anytime you're doing something predictable as a simple low post pass, they know it's coming. Now they can take advantage of their speed and quickness and their athleticism and their reputation. There's Michael stepping around, getting a steal. Balls out to John Paxson, pushed up. Nice, easy transition basket. And that's why it happened. Opening night it's elsewhere uh, in the East, the Knicks and the Pistons in Madison Square Garden. And New York with the early lead in the first quarter. Miami the two point lead. Glenn Rice under heavy pressure and Bobby Hansen who's in for Pippen plays it ahead to Jordan. Ronnie Cycli rebounding the Jordan miss. Glenn Rice on that last trip missed Ronnie Cycli wide open over on the wing. He's got to hit the open man. Inside it's Rice against Paxson. Jordan the block as he recovered, knowing that Rice wanted to post. It was Hanson, I'm sorry, that he had posted. Well, up. this is going to be the next step up for Glenn Rice. He's going to have to learn to read the double teams. He clearly missed it that time. There's going to be an open man when there's that many people coming. And he's going to have to learn to go from inside in the post to outside on the perimeter on the weak side. The old inside weak side pass, which the Chicago Bulls do very well. Kevin Edwards is in for the Heat. A three try by Smith. And the long rebound.
corralled by Grant Long. Kevin Edwards in the lineup replacing Ryan Shaw. Long for three. Rimming no. And the tip is in by Smith. Well, it'll be interesting to see if the size of the Miami Heat guards, 6'6 six, six and 6'8, six, can be a factor in this game. Two minutes right, right drops it for Jordan. Jordan against Smith. Torres Grant, the offensive rebound. Loose ball to Jordan. Jordan off the drive. Eight points for him, a two point Miami lead. Smith around the Grant Long screen. Now Edwards off the drive, shooting on Paxson. Cartwright juggled the rebound away to Sightly, who missed the dunk, but a foul on Cartwright. Well, J.D., it's very interesting. Anytime Miami comes down, tries to run a set play, a simple post up, or a double pick down, anytime they do that, they're not effective. But when they do things in an unpredictable way, as, as you just saw Kevin Edwards take that shot, not as predictable. Chance for offensive rebounds. Ronnie Cycli ends up on the free throw line. Cycli a 73% free throw shooter during the regular season. Four-year pro out of Syracuse. Well, Ronnie Cycli's 5, 7, 8 free throw percentage for his lifetime is dramatically improved this year shooting almost 74 percent as are the heat they have been near the bottom in their first three years in the league but this year they rank very high in team free throw percentage it's Cartwright open right back to Jordan and Ronnie Sykley the rebound Michael Jordan three out of nine Kevin Edwards launching long and the rebound to Jordan he's got a run out Well, I'd like to see Kevin Edwards show a little more patience. He's not one of their best percentage shooters from the perimeter. He's only a 45% shooter. They got to break the defense down a little bit, be a little more unpredictable. Let that guy shoot a little bit if you want. It was Rice over Hanson. And now Chicago looking two for one in Jordan zigs and zags. I look for Kevin to get a timeout pretty quick here. I don't know. Coming. They got 33 seconds left in the quarter. He almost did, but he thought better of it. Now it's Miami with a quick shot. They could do it, and a foul on Horace Grant. The Bulls are over the limit. So actually, the Heat, with 2.8 difference between the shot clock and the game clock, We'll get it again on 24 second possession. Smith with six. You now you talked about how the Miami Heat has improved their free throw shooting. One of the ways they improved it was by subtraction. One of their worst free throw shooters was Sherman Douglas. He now plays for the Boston Celtics and the other guy and he took the bulk of their of their free throws when he played for them and was their leading scorer last year. And the other guy was Ronnie Cycling who took the next most amount of free throws for the Miami Heat and he dramatically improved his free throw shooting. Therefore the whole team is a better free throw shooting team. Smith with seven Miami by one. Two point eight difference remember between the shot clock and the game clock and 17 to shoot the heat to steal Smith on the run out and Miami in front by three. Well the long arms of Steve Smith can be a factor. This guy is some kind of athlete. He's come back off a of knee surgery, the death of his mother. He's had a difficult rookie year. He's the fifth leading scoring rookie in the league, and he's number one in assists for all rookies. And now he'll have to deal with Michael Jordan with six seconds left. Paxson left open. Side steps Og. Og maybe got a piece of it. Hanson, the turnaround shot. And after one. We've got a surprise here in Chicago Stadium. Through 12 minutes anyway, Kevin Lockery's heat up by three. Excellent start by the Miami Heat. They lead it by three after one. Well, this is a defensive technique that looks like a single individual play, but actually it's a two-man defensive play. 
He holds him. He lets him go. And he comes around behind and backwashes. Let's watch Steve Smith reach around with the long arms. There's his partner ready to get the ball. That's a two-man plan defensive play called the backwash. Some first quarter for Steve Smith. Nine points, four assists, and two steals. This is Allen Hogg and Purdue a block. Armstrong has it for Chicago. Pippen, who's back in, playing with two fouls, is guarded by Keith Askins. Off the cut, Pippen score the goal and a foul. Oh, my. Scotty Pippen took some serious hang time. Looked like he might have picked up an offensive foul here, but the way he holds his arm in, watch this. You make the call on that one. They made it on Allen. He has Hawk. a way, J.D., of kind of holding it in just a little bit. If you extend it, they're going to call the offensive foul. If you hold it in, you got a good chance of not getting the call. Chicago extending the defense, and Smith gives it up to Kessler. Kessler trapped shy of the timeline and a 10-second violation. You can watch a lot of NBA basketball, and you won't see that call very often. Coming up next on TNT, the Clippers and the Jazz kick off. And then Western Conference matchup. That's only the third turnover for Miami. The Knicks continue to lead the Pistons in the second quarter, and that is a low-scoring game, as everyone would uh, expect. They're just beginning the second quarter there. Yeah, it's kind up. of a pointless series, isn't it? <laughs> they may uh, have final scores in the 50s in that series. Indeed. Scotty <laughs> Pippen to Jordan in the post against Kevin Edwards and company. Well, there's no defense for that. They sent the double team. They got some size on them. Here's a big problem right here. They've got to be able to handle the extended pressure after the made basket and made free throws. They want to talk about it. Kevin Lockery taking a 20-second timeout with 10.49 left to go in the first half. The Chicago Bulls with five straight points here to start the second quarter, and thus this two-point lead. And now we understand it is a full timeout. 29 27 Bulls. Two point lead for Chicago. We're early in the second quarter. We've seen Michael Jordan at his best, Dick. Well, why is Michael Jordan able to take advantage of the size of Alan Ogg coming over on the double team? He smells it coming. See it? And he turns and fades towards the baseline, negating the seven foot one size of Alan Ogg. That's instinctual. It's brilliant. He's got 14 points in the contest, all of the Chicago points from the backcourt. And Miami with a 15. Brian Shaw and Steve Smith have the bulk of them. There's an isolation on B.J. Armstrong. Kevin Edwards scoring. And that's the one thing that Kevin Edwards can do. It's the thing that's kept him in the league, his ability to take the ball to the basket. He's one of the best leapers on the Miami Heat roster. And of course, he played his college basketball here in Chicago at DePaul. This is Scotty Pippen. He's had a rocky start here in game one of the playoffs. Keith Askins with Pippen backing away to front on Cycli. And so Askins nails the three. He's not a bad three point shooter, 34%. Not intimidated in the least. Michael Jordan for the dunk. It's a one point lead for the Heat this trip. Steve Smith at the controls. Jordan guarding him. Smith working around a pick by Long. And Askins to Cycling. Askins again. Two in a row for Keith Askins. It's a four-point lead for the Heat, and Chicago Stadium is very quiet right now. 
Well, what's interesting is they have the matchup. Uh, Will Purdue guarding Ronnie Cycli. Uh, guarded by, yes, guarding Ronnie Cycli. And they're looking to go inside to Cycli. And, and so they play Purdue behind and drop off of Askins on the perimeter. And he answered by knocking two perimeter jump shots down. At the conclusion of tonight's game, we will be selecting the Budweiser player of the game. There's that size on the double team. Pippen right back into Grant. That's about three or four times tonight. Chicago has had a player wide open under the basket. Well, the reason for that is because Miami is double teaming Michael Jordan. They're not dropping down from the top to cover the, the rotation of the, of the size that they're sending. Your size is on the baseline. It's going across. Someone has to drop down to cover. Keith Askins is on fire. He's got eight points in the contest. Two threes, and now that perimeter shot. Missed steal by Edwards. Jordan after the fake. And Purdue trying to keep it alive. A foul call. This ball There's the double team we're talking about. There's that inside weak side pass that we mentioned earlier. Got mixed up on the rotations in the matchup, and the strong Horace Grant inside is able to find himself with a free one. Armstrong guarded by Bimbo Coles, who has come in. Jordan off the drive, a punch into Grant again. See, most people don't realize how strong Horace Grant is. This trainer says that he can jam an 18-pound medicine ball with a 360 spin. That's unbelievable. Sightly is stopped by Purdue. It's still a live ball. Edwards, short. Long gives it up to Askins. And now Edwards off the drive, and Armstrong the steal. Chicago needs a hoop to tie. 7.50 left in the first half. The Bulls have led a few times, but briefly, it's been all Miami so far. Tough shot for Purdue. Horace Grant draws the foul, and he'll be on the line. If it's on Cycli, it's his third. It's on Keith Askins. Well, Horace Grant takes the role of being the person that sits in the third chair on this team behind Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. But right now, that third chair is a major factor in them staying in this basketball game right now. Scottie Pippen kind of quiet. Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. But it is not enough right now. By the way, Ronnie Cycli has only one foul. The Knicks with a seven point lead at home in the second quarter against Detroit. Here the Chicago Bulls draw even at 37. Horace Grant with eight. Michael Jordan out of the game. Craig Hodges is in. Miami throws ahead against the pressure. Cycli over Purdue. The thing about the Heat, they understand that pressing defense, and they don't stop once they beat the initial press. They continue on to the basket. Well, J.D., that's the best way to play it. Anytime a team presses you, you should punish them for pressing. What a great shot by Purdue. I don't know, but he'll be talking about it tomorrow on his 900 number. <laughs> Bimbo Coles nearly double dribbled, and a foul was called. Chicago will Purdue on the foul. First team foul against Chicago. Coles, an 82% free throw shooter, averaged over 10 points a game in the regular season. Boy, this is a young club, as you see Bimbo Coles, second year pro. Well, when Bimbo Coles came out of college, he was a huge scorer in college. You remember he played on the Olympic team, and uh, he was he was a player that everyone thought was going to have a nice, easy entrance into the NBA. Struggled big time. Looked like he almost didn't belong in the league. But this year he's improved in almost every statistical category and he's a tough kid at one time and they were playing out west he uh, he got a broken nose he went he flew back to Miami and then flew back to the west coast only this one game played 81 games this year this is B.J. Armstrong and he's fouled by Askins That's 
The second foul on Keith Askins. The Heat over the limit. And Chicago on the free throw line with 6.54 left to go in the half. And the one thing we see about this Miami club, we talk about the youth. Oftentimes, Dick, when the expansion takes place, the Knicks lead now is 11 over Detroit. Oftentimes, when expansion takes place, the team coming into the league says, well, we're going to build with youth. And then they win 15 games that first year. And usually the youth movement is out the window, but a credit to the Heat. They stayed right with the plan from day one. Well, they got one of the wisest, most sage advisors in all of the NBA in Billy Cunningham. He clearly knows what he's doing. And he cannot be deterred from his path. Uh, he makes his own decisions. Uh, he knew what he wanted to do. He had a plan. He stuck with it. He made some adjustments. Some things that, that they planned didn't turn out quite the way they wanted. I know they thought Alex Kessler was going to be a better player than he turned out to be because they worked hard to get him. That hasn't panned out. Uh, although the book, the book is not finished on Alex Kessler either. E.J. Armstrong shooting for the tie. Scott Williams has checked in for Chicago, replacing Will Perdue. The Bulls have it missed in nine free throw attempts. Kevin Edwards guarded by Hodges. Glenn Rice against Pippen. The outside shot for Long and Levingston, the rebound for Chicago. Scott Williams didn't have the angle to the basket. And now he takes a 20 second timeout. 631 left to the half, 15 on the shot clock. Phil Jackson's club looking for a lead. They haven't led very often, nor by very many tonight. Well, J.D., I'm impressed with two things. One is the transition defense of the Miami Heat. When they lose possession of the ball on a missed shot at the other end, they're getting back very well. And not only getting back, they're matching up and matching up high. And, and, and the other thing that's impressive is when they are playing on the half court, they're making passes difficult. That 20-second timeout that was just called was basically called because Scott Williams had no place to pass the ball. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, the Prudential Halftime Report, Ernie Johnson and Jim Lynham in the Atlanta studios. Highlights of Detroit at New York and a preview of game one between the Clippers and the Utah Jazz coming next tonight on TNT. They love to pulse in Chicago. And why not? We showed you at the beginning of the game how impressive the Bulls have been the last two years. I would love to have a tape recorder in the Bulls locker room at halftime. It should be very interesting. And Miami will get a severe taste, I'm sure, at the start of the third quarter of whether it had its effect. Levingston lifting the Bulls into only their third lead of the night. And lift is what he does when it gets to be playoff time. He was a big factor in the Bulls' sweep of the Pistons last year in the conference finals and their win over the Lakers in the NBA championship. Well, Bimbo Coles just showed us some of that offensive prowess that he came into the league with. And a nice penetrating move right over B.J. Armstrong. That's his first field goal. He's got four points. Armstrong guarded by Long in the switch. And now B.J. trying to find the mismatch. And there it is. Scott Williams in on Bimbo Coles. Coles with the foul and Scott Williams shoots two. See one of the philosophies that you want to have when you have a real bad mismatch inside is exactly what Bimbo Coles did. You got a big time mismatch. You got a you got a power guy inside on a, on a guard. So what you tell the guard to do is go for the steal. But what happened is <laughs> Scott Williams put his left arm out or his right arm out and tried to hold him off and that caused Bimbo Coles to get the foul. Michael Jordan back for the Bulls and Craig Hodges is out. 5.48 left to go in the half. Sometimes when you have those mismatches inside, if the, if the smaller guy doesn't go for the steal and he settles in behind or gets on the higher low side, you end up giving up a three pointer. So it's a pretty good philosophy. Well, the Bulls had made nine straight free throws prior to those two misses by Williams and Miami with an opportunity to regain the lead. Ryan Shaw back in. He's at the controls, guarded by Jordan. Coles pressured by Armstrong. Grant Long against Levingston, and there's Rice open, but blocked and blocked again. Scott Williams on the second one, and a jump ball has been called. 
You talked before the game, Dick, when we were standing out on the floor, you said Scott Williams is big. Well, I didn't realize the size of Scott Williams. As we see Glenn Rice go up inside and he gets blocked from behind and then blocked again. No goaltending there. They are going to give him a jump ball on the first block. That was Pippen. Scott Williams going out. Bill Cartwright back in for Chicago. 529 left to go in the half. Rice and Pippen. Pippen controls to Levingston. Jordan guarded by Shaw. Michael quick move to the hoop and finishes lefty. 18 points. Creativity. Thy name is Michael. Mm. The Bulls with their fourth two-point lead of the game. That was Pippen the steal. Levingston, Pippen, and Jordan. And now the Bulls have their biggest lead. I mean, if there was a force meter on dunks, he just broke the meter. Timeout. A wise choice by Kevin Lockery. This is a 20. Chicago Stadium roars to life. That's the way this Bulls team is. They can score in bunches. And that's exactly what's happened here as they move out to a four-point lead. 446 left to go in the first half. Well, well, what's happening is that the Dobermans are being sent out to go to work. And that's what causes this kind of easy basket. Look at the force of that ball as it went through the net. I think it got a little help as it bounced off of Michael's shoulder. But he was sending a message with that dunk. Michael started slowly, had only one field goal in the first nine minutes. But he's online now, 20 points for him in the game. Rice pressured by Pippen. Now it's Shaw, Jordan checks in. Oh, under pressure, a foul called. Brian Shaw on the free throw line. New York continuing to lead Detroit. They're, uh, they've got 41 points on the board already before halftime. That foul on Michael Jordan is first, and Brian Shaw, 79% free thrower, hits the first free throw attempt tonight for him. Well, you know, normally in the NBA, they say first team to 100 wins. <laughs> in the Detroit New York series, what is it? First team to 85 wins. <laughs> Two free throws for Shaw. A little down court pressure by Miami. That cuts the Bulls lead to two. This is a 2 2 1 zone trap. Normally the Bulls handle pressure very well. In fact, they do a lot of three point shooting out of it. Here's Jordan. Wow! Everyone in this arena fell back in their seat. You did, I did. The whole scorer's table fell back in their seat. When he decides to elevate his game, he says, get out of my way. Oh, my Lord. Ronnie Sykley on the foul. Jordan's got 23. And Sykley has his second foul now. Chicago's lead is five. Glenn Rice over Levingston. Levingston may have got a piece, tipping the rebound. And Bimbo Coles knocked it out of bounds. Chicago Stadium the site tonight as the Bulls begin defense of their NBA championship. And Dick Versace, it was a sluggish start, but we are now seeing the Bulls uh, bearing their horns, so to speak. Well, J.D., the thing that kept Miami in the game early was their good transition defense, the fact that the... Chicago Bulls came out with a little swagger, a little passive defensively, but now they're really stepping it up. Paxson looking for Jordan. He's on fire. It's the first miss for Michael in a while. And Brian Shaw right back for the heat. Jordan knocked it away. It's out of bounds to Miami with 15 to shoot. Everything now the Bulls are contesting. 
Glenn Rice against Pippen. Steve Smith right back to Rice. Good play. Oh, good, good out of bounds place. Step the inbounder back inside. Nobody picked him up. Wide open inside. About three and a half minutes left in the half. Livingston takes up slack. Came up empty at the basket and then gets hit with a loose ball foul in the process. Well, I think Cliff was a little frustrated that he missed that shot. He actually made a nice move, put a little dipsy do on it. Not really the way he makes his living, but it was a good, good finish for him. He just didn't go down, and he got frustrated. Horace Grant back in for Levingston. I think Phil Jackson was a little frustrated too. He wanted a basket on that trip. Smith against Jordan. Smith from 20. Rimming no, and Pippen controls the rebound. Scotty Pippen under the grant. Yeah, I talked before about how they got back in transition and how they matched up. That time they got the bodies back, but they didn't match up. Scotty Pippen has his seventh assist, and Horace Grant is getting rich hanging around the basket. Sightly. A pitch out to Long. What an acrobatic shot for Grant Long. He has four. Well, Michael Jordan came across the lane and made him change that shot, but he responded to Grant Long, big time basket. The Heat hanging right in, only down three. Ten on the shot clock. Jordan against Rice. This will be his third foul as he lets him go. It's out of bounds. Last touch by Miami and a timeout taken. 2.21 left in the half. 52-49 Chicago. With the Bulls up by three here, a reminder, game two of our doubleheader tonight on TNT. Game one in the... Clippers Jazz Series with Pete Van Weeren and Jack Gibbons ready for the call there. Sometimes a player just has to take his entire team on his own talented broad shoulders. Look at this finish by Michael. Michael knew that the team was in trouble that he needed baskets and they needed inspirational baskets. He provided Michael Jordan with 12 points in the first quarter 11 in the second. For his 23 points so far. Uh, interesting thing that uh, Kevin Lockery decides to leave Glenn Rice in with the two fouls early, gets him in and out a little bit, gets, plays him quite a bit in his first half. He's three for ten for seven points, playing very tentatively offensively. He's afraid to pick up the foul. Chicago to come in with six on the shot clock. It's Pippen to trigger. A lob to Paxson. Jordan from just inside of three point country and he has 25. Well the thing that's amazing is how can you have Michael Jordan that open. I mean you must switch out. You must get on his tail and follow him. You just can't let him be that open. It looked like the Heat really committed a lot of people to following the ball Dick. Rice gets the dunk and I think they did so because they knew the Bulls were up against the shot clock a little bit and they thought maybe they could get the ball stopped. But the Bulls were able to get it to the open man. Cartwright, cycle on him. Jordan tips to Grant. And now it's Jordan again. He's in for an Astro-like performance. He's got 27. Well, J.D., the, the problem with Michael Jordan when you're trying to defend him is that you've got to make him shoot the jump shots. Because if he gets airborne and flying in there, I mean, all those baskets are too inspirational. Problem is, he's knocking down a jump shot. That ball is like on a rope right now. He's shooting ropes. Ryan Shaw and the Bulls quickly doubled as Miami wanted to post John Paxson. Chicago personal foul by John Paxson. Paxson gets hit with the foul. Four team fouls. First in the last two minutes. 106 left. The Knicks have opened up a 13 point lead on the Pistons. Outside shot for Smith. Steve Smith with 11. That's his first two points of the second quarter, however. Look at the matchup inside with those two new prototype power forwards Grant Long and Grant. And Grant. Horace Grant. 
There's Cartwright in deep on Sykley. Now packs it. Sidestep Shaw. First two points for John Paxson. That's how he makes his living. Spot up shooting. Miami in a hurry. They can hit with an offensive foul. They were trying to go two for one, it looked like. And I might add all the other little sacrifices that he has to make to help his team win as he picked up that charge. Second one of the night. And that's the third foul on Brian Shaw. Kevin Lockery getting him out of the game. Also, Sykley goes out. Og is in. 7-2, Allen Og. Number 53. It looks like the Bulls, uh, they had a chance if they wanted to yeah. go get a quick two for one. They decided not to. 16 on the shot clock. About seven difference. This is Cartwright. Had it chopped away. Smith up court to Coles. Who lobs to Glenn Rice. A quick release. Rimming no. And Scotty Pippen the rebound with 10 seconds left. Got to get the ball stopped there. They're pretty well matched up now. Pippen driving hard to the hoop. You got to make him take the jump shot over you there. Back off. The long up court attempt wide to the right by Smith. And at the half, the Bulls have their biggest lead at seven. And Chicago Stadium loves it so far. minutes down and 24 to go at Chicago Stadium. How about that? The Miami Heat hanging right with the Chicago Bulls. They trail by seven as they play at halftime. Ernie Johnson here in Atlanta with the Prudential Halftime Report, joined by Sixers head coach Jimmy Lineham. And I'm surprised, you know, we thought I'm this was just going to be a shock might be a better word. What do you think the, the key was for the Heat to hang with them in the first I think half? a couple of things. Uh, number one, they did a good job controlling the pace of the game, so the crowd really wasn't a factor early on. Made some timely three-point shots. And I think until Michael Jordan maybe sensed that the Bulls just uh, didn't have their normal composure, he upped it a notch. He has a way of doing that. He gives uh, Cycle a facial with that dunk, and then the place goes nuts. Frequently. And the crowd being in the game, big factor in Chicago Stadium. All right, that is game one of our doubleheader there at halftime. Game two, we're going to have the L.A. Clippers visiting the Delta Center to take on the Utah Jazz game, one of that Western Conference first-round series. Let's get some insight into that series now and talk to Danny Manning, who is at the Delta Center. Danny, how you feeling tonight? I feel fine. Do you really excited, nervous? Uh, I'm excited. I think this is going to be uh, a lot of fun for us. This is our first time being in the preseason in quite some time. I mean, postseason in quite some time, and uh, we're looking forward to it. You know, a lot is made of the inexperience factor. They say that a lot of these guys on the Clippers haven't been there. Have you been trying to get some tips from guys like Doc Rivers, James Edwards, to give you some playoff savvy going in? Oh, we sure have. Those guys have been talking to us every day at practice, telling us what to expect and, and how to prepare ourselves mentally and physically for this battle we're about to go into. Jimmy Lineham is here with me. Danny, just curious, uh, playing the Jazz, obviously, Carl Malone, second leading scorer in the league, 28 points a game. Any special plans how you're going to deal with him? Well, uh, we know Carl Malone's a great player, and he's going to score points. We're just going to try to contain him and make it hard for him and uh, make him shoot overs. We don't want to give him a lot of layups and a lot of dunks on the fast break. We just want to make him shoot over good hand pressure. Danny, I understand that uh, Larry Brown has just joined us here. As we get ready to talk to Larry, let me ask you what a difference he has made to this team. Well, Coach Brown's come in and done a great job in the, in the sense of turning us around and giving us confidence in ourselves. He's implemented a new system for us, which is a passing game offensively, where we get a lot of touches and a lot of people movement, and we get a lot of shots in the paint. We, our field goal percentages are up, and uh, we score more points as a team. Defensively, we try to put a lot of pressure on the ball and help each other out and uh, be, a, be in a position to rotate and uh, just play good, solid team defense. Jimmy, you got a question for Larry Brown, your old buddy over there in Utah? Well, uh, Larry, obviously uh, you guys have really picked it up a notch and have played uh, really a great stretch of basketball. I was just wondering how important you thought this top of the game was. Inexperienced uh, Clipper team playing in uh, Utah. Is that, is that a big factor, you think, how you get off early? Well, I think it's important that we play well early, uh, especially in a short series. But I'm not really worrying about something I have no control over. Uh, you know, we have four older players that have been in playoffs before, and our young players are looking forward to it. I, I think the, the most important thing is that we just go out and not worry about losing and, and play the way we're capable of playing. Larry, when we spoke in Los Angeles a few weeks ago, you had mentioned that, you know, when you took the job with the Clippers, you were really trying to build some steam for next season. How surprised are you that you're 23 and 12 after the break? You're in the playoffs, and, and a lot of folks in L.A. are talking about the other team now. 
Well, I was pleasantly surprised from the first time I walked in the dressing room. Uh, the attitude of the team's been great. Uh, you know, Danny's elevated his game and is playing about as well as anybody in the league, as is Ron Harper. And um, it's been a pleasant, pleasant surprise. But I, I think the big thing is uh, we didn't expect this. Uh, we just wanted to go out every night and be competitive. And as a result, we're here, and we hope to try and prolong this season a little bit. Larry, not uh, expecting it. A player is not expecting it. Uh, do you feel it's like a loose group and maybe as a result ready to go out there and surprise? Well, Jimmy, um, I think the players expected to make the playoffs. That's, that was the first thing I noticed when I walked in the dressing room, um, and that was a great feeling. Um, I don't know if we'll be loose, but I don't want anybody to worry about losing. Uh, I, I think the most important thing, and we've talked about this, is, is to just try to play the right way. Um, I think personally we're real excited about playing and if you're excited about doing something you have a tendency to do it well. Larry Brown, Danny Manning, thank you very much for joining us before the game tonight. That's game two of our doubleheader on TNT. The best of luck at the Delta Center tonight, guys. Thank you. All right. What do you think about that series now that we've heard from these guys? And, you know, you saw Seattle win a game last night. Does that maybe inspire these guys? Says, hey, we can do that, too. I think Larry Brown probably will use something like that, Ernie. I think this is a very confident team right now. They've had a terrific stretch. And uh, as I said at the top, I think this is going to be a very interesting series. Now, when the Prudential Halftime Report continues, you got a war going on at the Garden tonight. The Pistons and the Knicks will have highlights and an update when we come back. Bulls in a struggle, leading the Heat 60-53 to as the Prudential Halftime Report continues. A vintage look at the inside of a basket for those of you unfamiliar. Ernie Johnson back here with Jim Lyon. And let's talk about the Knicks and the Pistons. I mean, two defensive giants really banging tonight at the Garden. Two of the best, and I'd say uh, the problem we've seen uh, over these last uh, merely months uh, with the Pistons. They've got to score a few more points. I mean, during the season, it was 90 to 89, the average score. Pistons over Knicks to the Pistons outscored them by four points in a total of four games. Let's get to the highlights at Madison Square Garden tonight. Patrick Ewing is the man in the middle, and Patrick Ewing is the guy you watch right off the bat. Watch him help out defensively. Orlando, that thing's going to Roji. Great block by Ewing. Gets the Knicks on the run, and Chuck Daly not exactly thrilled with those goings on. What a great touch Ewing has on the jumper. As you see, the Knicks are going to beat the press here, and there's Ewing. He floats that thing up there and finds nothing but the twine. And now, Mark Jackson with the big defensive play. It's a hand on it. Charles Oakley, outlet, John Starks. See you later. Jams it down. This has been, as we say, a little bit of a rough game. Look at this end of the first half. Sally and Starks. I don't know who got the worst of that. Sally came away kind of holding his shoulder. Right now it is 49 to 38. New York with the lead over the Detroit Pistons. Big game for the Knicks to win at home because they've kind of been going the wrong way toward the end of the season. Patrick Ewing is obviously a key to them, Jimmy. And the and Telestrator enters the picture again. Detroit knows he's a key. Uh, they're not going to let him play on this low box area. You see Starks with the ball. Interestingly, rather than just hold it, he's going to pass it here just to give Patrick a chance to get a little bit deeper position in that post, a little closer to the lane. You want to see Mark Jackson kick it back to Starks, and he in turn will throw it into Patrick. You see it, Patrick, right tight to the lane. Mark's telling him to get as close as he can. Starks throws it in there. Now stop it right here. You're going to see Isaiah. They're not going to let Patrick play in this area. Isaiah's going to come down to double team. Decent position by Sally. You might like him a little bit closer. But what Ewing's about to do is not supposed to happen. Out of a double team without dribbling a basketball, Ewing's going to get a shot. These two guys will be right there on him. Turns, faces, stop it right there. You see, two people on him. Now what Ewing's going to do with this jumper? He's going to put this ball dead center in the basket. You're not supposed to be able to do that. When Joe Jones shoots this ball, it hits the back rim and goes over the backboard. <laughs> because it's Patrick Ewing, you're going to see, boom, dead center, fading, kicking his legs, basket. Joe Jones, that noted jump shooter. I tell you what, that is telestrator action with Jim Lynham. Folks, we're just getting warm here. We got a doubleheader Friday night. We got the second half still to come, the Chicago Bulls and the Miami Heat. We've got another game still to go tonight. Clippers and the Jazz and inside the NBA after that. Chicago Stadium, it's the Bulls by seven over the Miami Heat at halftime. Jim Durham with Dick for Saints here at courtside, and we are joined by Magic Johnson. Magic, a little more competitive game than a lot of people thought it would be. Well, Miami came out and said look we're here to play we're not scared we're not intimidated and we're just gonna play our game we're gonna play as hard as we can 
as you can see the result they put right in the ball game. Yeah I thought I saw a little swagger though on the face of the Chicago Bulls looked like they had little preconceived notions. Well I, I think that th they thought they were going to come in and dominate them and uh, this team you, you have to play this team. What we tried to do when I was in the playoff we tried to dominate the, the early opponent. Speaking okay? of dominating tell us about what you see right here. <laughs> Well, here is Michael Jordan. They, they run this play all the time for him. He comes, you know, down through the baseline. And Glenn Rice thought he was going to switch, but he didn't. And he's now looking for him. And you know what you can do when Michael Jordan is wide open, 20 footer yeah, all net. That's the same shot you're shooting warm ups, isn't that, it? Uh, exactly. <laughs> here you got Pippen coming down right to the airman. And he takes off just to show everybody, I'm right here. I love that. <laughs> All right, Magic. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in Barcelona. You got Great it. Good to see you, Irvin. Okay. Good to see you, Coach. This seven point lead for the Bulls happens to be their biggest of the game. It was Miami for the most part. In the first half, the Bulls only led briefly, but then with Michael Jordan showing the way, the Bulls were able to crank it up defensively and they spurred it out to that. Seven point lead. You can see in the second quarter, it was pretty much all Chicago 71% to 53% for the Heat. From three point territory, Miami with the only three point field goal so far in six attempts. The Bulls have yet to attempt one. And, and when we began our telecast tonight, Nick Versace said that's one of the chinks in the armor of the Bulls. One, they don't shoot many, and two, they don't shoot that well. Here's Rice against. Horace Grant beats him with a nice move and Rice is in double figures with 11. Well I think you're going to see Glenn Rice express himself a little more offensively. I think he was playing quite tentatively in the first half because of the foul trouble that he was in. They're going right at him right now with Michael Jordan. Left that one a little short. Brian Shaw keeping a wary eye out for Jordan. Now it's Smith against Paxson. Cycli against Cartwright, double up, Shaw for three, and Pippen the rebound. You know, I'm a little surprised. Ronnie Cycli gets the ball in the post, and all he's done is look to pass the ball back out. Hasn't expressed himself inside like he should. That guy has expressed himself on occasion. 29 points for Jordan, and Chicago back up by seven. Well, I think Magic, you know, did a nice uh, uh, overall uh, overview of the game as it went in the first half. It, it was a game where Chicago came out with swagger. Uh, Miami came out much more poised than you would have expected. And finally, Michael Jordan decided enough is enough. I'm taking over 27 big ones in the first half. Scotty Pippen left it short. And now Shaw coming back the other way. Pippen hasn't been a real factor offensively tonight. Rice for three. Sightly the rebound. But Scotty has done some other things. He has seven assists and four rebounds to his credit. Smith working around the Grant Long screen, and it's Brian Shaw from the perimeter. And Shaw has 10. Kevin Lockery's club won't go away in this first ever playoff encounter for the Miami Heat. John Paxson gives it up to Jordan, the shot clock at eight. Jordan against Brian Shaw. Hangs the shot up there. Horace Grant, a wild tip, and Grant Long controls. And the Heat looking to cut it to three this trip. The Heat's doing a great job of playing the Chicago offense and then reducing it to the one-on-one -on -one moves that are left for them for them to take advantage of. And the only guy that's really you know, consistently doing it is, is Michael Jordan. So it's it's kind of getting back to same old, same old, but same old, same old ain't that bad. Glenn Rice with his third foul. You know, we forgot to mention that Rice had toenail removed from his big toe on his right foot a couple days ago. He had it stepped on in practice. So while that is not a serious injury, it does create extreme pain. Well, you know, someone was talking to me before the game, and they said, oh, nice move. Yeah, that's what they said. 31 points for Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't what they said, <laughs> but, <laughs> but what's what's happening is the the passing lanes are being taken away, and that's why Michael Jordan is able to get in so close to the basket. And once he gets in there, it's a matter of get up in the air, have a cup of tea, two lumps of sugar, please, and I'll just put the ball in the basket while I'm there. And Brian Shaw gets assessed his fourth personal foul. Jordan with 32. 
Now you talked about the Chicago Bulls not shooting a lot of threes. They did shoot 454. Mainly they shoot threes for spacing. As they're having trouble with the press. Pippen to Jordan. And it's a 10 point Chicago lead. And the Heat are feeling some heat. Jordan knocks the ball out of bounds. Scotty Pippen with nine assists. This is the early part of the third quarter that we talked about in the first half and how the Heat would react when the Bulls began to turn it up. Oh. Smith missing. Sykley fakes on the follow and gets the jam. Ronnie Sykley has nine. Uh, one of the things that the Heat is doing against the press is they're having their power forward take the ball out of bounds, sliding him into the middle and having him try to break the press. The problem is if he gets caught in the trap down there, he's not very adroit. He can't attack. Pat Wright is fouled by Sykley. One of the most effective ways to break the Chicago press is to use your your two guards and your small forward down against the press and the deep side of it. Put your big guys all the way down, and then once you can get the ball in the middle, it's usually going to be in the ball in the hands of a ball handler, JD, and then that guy can take it right to the basket. Bill Cartwright has had a real struggle at the free throw line during the regular season. Hits his first attempt of the playoffs. Current right was 60% during the regular season. Look at Shaw and Smith front Jordan and Pippen. The Heat well aware of that play the Bulls like to use when they flash those two guys to the basket on free throw attempts. You see the struggle you have when you have a big man trying to advance the ball against the press. You can't punish the press when you have a big man trying to handle it. You can get it up sometimes, but then it's like, oh, breathe easy. Right. Six to shoot. Sykley left it short. Look at Jordan snap at that rebound. Hence the expression that Johnny Bach uses, turning loose the Doberman. <laughs> they rip and tear at the ball when they got their game going. Well, I'm afraid that Swagger has turned to dagger. Oh, Cartwright making a solid move out of the post. And... Kevin Lockery is going to have to burn a timeout. Chicago Stadium revs up as the Bulls go up by 12. When a team presses you, you want to punish them for pressing. But when you have your big men handling the ball like the Heat does, it can't split that trap. You need to be able to split the trap with a ball handler. No ball handler, steal, give it up. Ten on the shot clock. Jordan a missed steal. Smith off penetration. Pull a big basket for the Heat. Steve Smith with 13. Steve Smith showing a great deal of poise and cool for a rookie. And now it's Brian Shaw knocking Jordan's pass away with 16 to shoot. Chicago to inbound. Jordan against Shaw. Paxson over the Pippen pick. And Cartwright set one as well. Kevin Lockery standing over on the sideline saying switch out. He wanted the bottom man on the double screen to switch out and take John Paxson. You can't give him that open shot. Defender ran right into the double. Smith from the outside. Two buckets for Brian, uh, Brian, uh, Steve Smith, and that's a three. 16 points for it. Alley oop for Jordan. Michael inside on Shaw. And now the Heat trying to string three hoops together. Long feeds Rice. They do. They get the three in a row. And Glenn Rice with that basket brings the Heat to within seven. Uh, Glenn Rice got one of the sweetest jump shots I ever saw when he was a when he was a college se uh, senior at, at Michigan. I thought he'd come right into the league and light it up. He didn't. Made only 17 threes in his first year. This year he made 155. 
Horace Grant knocked it away from Long. It's still loose and out of bounds to Chicago. Credit Horace Grant That's absolutely, with a hustling play. Absolutely, J.D. Unbelievable. Horace Grant, the workhorse, the blue-collar guy, the third-tier member, laying down, out of the play, still slapping, scratching, crawling, trying to keep it alive. Gets lucky, knocks it off a Heat player, keeps the possession for his team. Exactly six minutes remaining in the third. Jordan against Shaw. Grant guarded by Cycli. Now it's Jordan against Smith. A rimming good. Michael Jordan with 36. He's got them all. The power dunks, the meter breakers, and the criers. They're all falling for him. It's his house. Point lead for Chicago with 5.30 left third quarter. Game one in this Eastern Conference Series. It's been much more competitive game than people thought. Here's Long on the drive, gets snuffed, gets it back though, stayed with it nicely, again Long. And so at both ends, Dick, we see these two hard-working power forwards have their effect. You've got to like Grant Long. You've got to like his work ethic. You've got to like his perseverance. And he looks just like Horace Grant. Nice compliment. But not quite as much like him as Harvey Grant. Now Jordan feeds Paxson. It's a two, and it's good. John Paxson with six. Well, Jordan has six assists to go with his 36 points. Oh, one round move to Cycli, pipping the block, but a foul. Now, Chicago really has not solved that high pick and roll. It has provided a lot of scoring opportunities for the Miami Heat. See the high pick and roll? Now he's free. There was no real design on what to do. Bill Cartwright moves over, and that's why you see Ronnie Cycli free inside. Let's take a look at tonight's Chevrolet scoreboard. After this free throw by Cycli. See, if you're going to defend the high pick and roll, the solution to it must be with the two guys out high. Oh, New York up 23 over the Detroit Pistons in the third. Cycli lost them both, but the Bulls lost it out of bounds. I got a fresh 24. Let's see if they run an out of bounds play to score or if they come back in and run that high pick and roll again. After seeing that Detroit New York score what a reversal. Everybody figured coming into this game that the Bulls would win in a blowout. Not so. But now New York is blowing out Detroit. People thought that would be closely contested. Long drops the pass and lost it to Pippen. Pippen through traffic. Jordan on the finish. Loose ball rebound. It's Miami out on the run. Grant Long and Paxson took a stab at the dribble and picked up the foul. Two fouls on Paxson. Two team fouls on Chicago. Well, I think it's evident at this point that Miami is not going away. They've survived some crowd involvement rallies and they've hung in there very, very well. There's that high pick and roll again. Baseline screen. Shaw against Paxson. Jordan has it. Shaw quickly jumped out to stop the ball. And now Paxson being guarded by Grant Long. And Horace Grant gives it up to Paxson. Woohoo! Pax got knocked down by Smith. He wanted the foul. He got the two. Darrell Garrison looks straight ahead. Miami down by 11. In this third quarter, the first time Chicago's led by double figures. Cycli on the follow. Cycli with 11. You know, look at Phil, Phil Jackson over there. He knows that uh, they have not solved that defensively. Uh, I talked earlier about the high pick and roll has to be solved with the two guys that are defending out high. If you're going to wait for the guy inside picking up to solve it, you're always going to give up something juicy. And foul is on Glenn Rice, his fourth. He goes out. Keith Askins is in. Also, Kevin Edwards coming in for Miami. And Alan Ogg replacing Cycli. And 
Scott Williams has come on for Chicago replacing Horace Grant. Well, right now the Miami Heat has really got to play some great defense because they don't have much offense on the floor. This could be a very dangerous period of time for the Miami Heat. Again, the Bulls go into Jordan, and again he delivers. He's got 38. 13 of them field goals. He turned and said something to Kevin Lockery. I don't know what it was, but they had a good relationship when Kevin coached him here in Chicago. And corrected 17 field goals for Jordan so far in the game and a timeout taken with 251 left in the third. Okay. Back with you in our Atlanta studio. We'll send you back to Chicago Stadium in just a second. Let's update what's going on at Madison Square Garden tonight. The Knicks and the Detroit Pistons, and it is all New York Knicks playing at home. Temper, temper here because there was a huge run by the Knicks, about 22 to 4 in the third period. Bill Lambier really didn't do much to Patrick Ewing, though. Patrick wants a piece of him. Line forms to the left. Detroit and New York. Playing in the third period, 76-49, the Knicks with the lead over Detroit. Now let's go back to Chicago Stadium, Jim Durham and Versace. All right, Ernie. Man, what a, what a ball game in New York. You would not expect the Knicks to be winning so handily. Well, you know, people don't realize this, but New York had beaten Detroit six straight before they lost to him twice this year and they beat in the, in the times that they beat him six straight they had Vinnie Johnson and James Edwards and, and you're just not going to have Patrick Ewing go four for 20 every night Miami down 11 246 left to go in the third long driving on Williams Grant Long Grant has long. eight and the heat Staying right in it, only down by nine. Kevin Lockery, famous for this half court uh, and full court presses, is putting on a 2 2 1 zone press, trying to create some, some uh, uh, uncertainty on the case of the Bulls. What you want to do with your press is you want to say, okay, uh, we're not going to guard you as tight, but you're not going to be able to say who exactly gets to shoot the ball. Chicago to throw in. That foul was on Keith Askins. Jordan, a quick spin out and dunk. Well, Alan Og has got to come across the lane, sacrifice his body, try to pick up a charge. He can't stand on the other side of the lane when Michael Jordan's heading for the basket. If he wants to stand and watch there, he should buy a ticket. Free try missed by Smith. Rebound, Scott Williams. And now Chicago with it up 11. Michael Jordan, by the way, has 40. Jordan against Smith sees the double team coming and just goes to the hoop 42 well there's not much you can do the only thing you can do is you got to maybe decide that you're going to go trap him and make him give up the ball Kevin is not elected to do that get it early hasn't done it much since long from the foul line Cartwright the rebound Chicago a 13 point lead in the ball with 123 left in the third. Jordan around a Paxson screen. Edwards has him. Michael zips the pass off to Pippen. Shot clock at one. Scott Williams on a bailout. And the rebound to Edwards. <laughs> Not a French pastry on that exchange. Grant Long being guarded by Paxson. He says, clear out. Let me have this little guy. Now it's Edwards off the drive, and Jordan a reach-in foul. That's his second. First on the Bulls in the last two minutes. See, one of the things that I really love about this Chicago team is they play the game together. They play it totally unselfishly. Right there, you saw a good example of the kind of unselfishness that exists on this team. As soon as Michael Jordan reached in and that whistle blew, Scott Williams put his hand up and said, call the foul on me. Edwards gets another. Jordan getting a rest. Craig Hodges is in. 42 points, eight rebounds, and six assists for Michael Jordan. Chip Schaefer, the Bulls trainer. It's like they're wrapping a leg in ice. Chicago up 12. 
John Paxson at the controls, guarded by Smith. Pippen with a pick from Purdue. Now Cycli has Pippen. Eight on the clock. Hodges for three. Rimming no, and the rebound to Cycli. Kevin Edwards outside to Rice. Right back to Edwards. Over Paxson. And on the rebound fight, it's Cycli. Now it's out of bounds. Which one? The Bulls have it with 14.8 left. Well, credit Ronnie Cycli with some terrific effort there. He just couldn't get the ball down. He worked it. He was doing a yeoman's job in traffic rebounding. Got a couple bangs at it, but just couldn't get it to drop. Bimbo Coles is on for Miami. Smith getting a rest here. And then, of course, during the timeout between quarters. No shot clock involved. Six seconds. Paxson giving two Hodges. And Purdue with a follow with .6 left. After three, it's the Bulls in front by 14. Where the Bulls, after a sluggy start, have opened up a 14-point lead, headed to the fourth. Well, you might you might ask yourself, why does Michael Jordan get so open here? Well, Alan Ogg has moved over to pick up Scottie Pippen inside because he was worried about being illegal. Didn't come across the lane to help, and Michael Jordan shot a warm-up dunk. He has scored in all shapes and sizes tonight as he returns for the fourth quarter. Michael Jordan with 42 points. Scott Williams stays in. So does Purdue. In the third, Chicago outscoring the Heat 27-20. What's interesting is Michael Jordan has all these points, but they've come in kind of a blending way. They just seem to have come in the natural flow of the game. Not that he's not asserting himself. He works around a Purdue screen. Sightly jumps out at it. Good touch pass. Hodges to Williams and. Scott Williams got banged in the air. He'll shoot two. Cycli on the foul. Oh my, the Knicks continue to pull away from the Detroit Pistons in the fourth quarter. I would say the first team to 85 will win that one. <laughs> right. JD, I think it's going to be a bizarre series. You might see a blowout on one court and then you might see a blowout on another court. Neither of those teams are, are very consistent offensively. So they don't really know from night to night what kind of production they're going to get. You know the Detroit Pistons have to get 45 50 out of their guards. They just can't do that every night and they don't get it then they they're very susceptible to being beat. On the other hand Patrick Ewing normally has to have some good nights and if not then the two perimeter shooters John Starks and, and uh, Mark Jackson have to put the ball in the basket. A free throw made by Scott Williams, the first for him after missing three in a row. Keith Askins on the drive, leaves it for Grant Law. And the rebound to Williams. Now it's Jordan at the controls. Good punch into Purdue. Wonderful pass. Absolutely wonderful. The Chicago Bulls have their biggest lead of the game at 17. We near the 11 minute mark for the fourth quarter. Kevin Edwards being chased by Scott Williams. Three to shoot. And it's tipped in by Coles. Bimbo Coles with six. Miami double teaming the ball. It's Armstrong trapped and the pass is stolen by Coles and Hodges trying to take the foul out on the floor. Gets it done. Watch the passing here. Michael Jordan pushes it up, gets it back, goes up, oh, changes his mind inside. A bing pass. Bing, I'll hit you inside. The Heat thinking that there should be free throws here, but the officials saying, no, the foul occurred out on the floor. I'll tell you what, I've gained a lot of respect for this Miami Heat team. You know, no matter what the score is, 
They've come out and played with a great deal more poise than I thought they possibly could. And I think the Chicago Bulls have gained some respect for them as well. I don't know if that's good news or bad news. I hear what you're saying. And uh, because of the way that Michael Jordan and the Bulls have played in the second half, it could be bad news for Miami. Well, one of the things that you want to consider is this question that's so often asked, you know, is it better to be in the lottery and get a couple ping pong balls or to be, you know, in the playoffs? And I don't think there's any question. You know, this Miami team, team, team wanted to be in the playoffs. They're proud to be here and they're acquitting themselves very nicely. Thank you. Be sure to stay tuned for Inside the NBA with Fred Hickman. He'll have scores and highlights from tonight's action inside the NBA coming up following the Clippers and the Jazz from the Delta Center. Bill Jackson's Bulls turning it over and Miami down 15 as we near the 10 minute mark for the fourth trying to cut into that deficit. It's Rice against Jordan. And the foul call on Michael Jordan. Well that, you don't see that very often that's the hand checking foul. That's kind of a friendly warning from Daryl Garrison. See the hand check do you see the hand on the hip there. That's not much of a foul, but he's impeding his progress, and he's just saying, hey, I'm not going to allow that. Glenn Rice connecting. Rice with 15. Jordan, two Hodges. It's a two. And the rebound out of bounds. Which way? To the Bulls. Rice, the last to touch it for Miami. Well, there's no question in my mind. Michael Jordan has come out in this quarter and said, I'm going to take care of some of my teammates. I got enough points. I don't want to get back to this thing where I get 50 and the rest of the team gets, you know, 30. But you know what, Dick? He calls himself a utility player. Michael Jordan says, I'm a utility man. Whatever my team needs from me, that's what I'm going to do on any given night. There are some nights I don't need to score. There are other nights when I do. Can you imagine him as a utility player? We think of a utility player in a, a baseball sense as a that is a, a guy who comes in as a substitute, right? Just fills in. <laughs> I'm aghast. A utility player. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Seldom happens. <laughs> Getting down the lane is Edwards, and he finds Grant Long. Nine minutes left, and Chicago the ball, a 13-point lead. Now what's, what's interesting now is the spacing that the Chicago Bulls are trying to set up. Look how they're way outside the three-point line trying to create some easy baskets like that. Well, it's all going south right now for the Miami Heat. Irrespective, they have to be in a position where their club, their owners, their fans must feel good about how they came out and started this game. Hey, there's 8.30 left. Here's Jordan in. Finding Pippen, who finds Armstrong, who finds the basket. Well, B.J. Armstrong is the finest long-range shooter on his team. He is their best three-point shooter. Shoots 40 percent from three-point line. Took 87 of them this year. Made 35. The Dutch boy in the paint being dominated not by a front-line player, but rather by a player from the backcourt, Michael Jordan. But then again, Dick, he dominates quite often. Here in Chicago Stadium, the Bulls have opened up a 17-point lead in the house that Jordan didn't build but has filled on a nightly basis. And they're building another one right next door, <laughs> which he will fill. Uh, an interesting sidebar. Scottie Pippen has only taken seven shots. He has 11 points, but he has 11 assists and five rebounds. Doing what he has to to help the team win. This is Rice guarded by Pippen. Jordan snaps down the rebound. He's got nine. Armstrong pressured by Coles. Scott Williams guarded by Long. Six on the shot clock. And Ronnie Cycli has the miss. 
Miami down 17. Glenn Rice looked like he got fouled by Jordan, no call. And Rice got looked like he got fouled again, no call. Yeah, that's a little discouraging. Kevin Lockery not happy, man of the Miami Heat bench happy, assistant coaches, trainers, doctors, lawyers, everybody unhappy, and they got reason. Cole loses it to Armstrong, and then a foul call. Is it on this Bimbo Cole? Calls it is. Two fouls on Coles in the contest, and Steve Smith returns to replace him. Also, Brian Shaw in for Kevin Edwards. Yeah, that's a tough pill for a, a young team to take. You know, they, they they feel that they've gotten to the playoffs and they deserve the foul calls, irrespective of the score or how the flow of the game is going or how the momentum of the game is going. I mean, those are two obvious fouls that should have been called. Chicago making a change. Horace Grant is back for Scott Williams. Jordan guarded by Shaw. Michael lost his footing and lost the ball. Well, I think there's a wet spot on the floor because you don't often see him lose his footing like that. Miami keeps it. And they're out drying it up right now. Michael Jordan closing in on a triple double. He needs two assists and one rebound. Cycling is fouled by Jordan. Chicago personal foul 23 Michael Jordan is forward. Four fouls on Jordan. Bobby Hansen coming in to replace it. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan getting a hand. His club in front by 17 with 653 remaining. Well, Miami's doing the right things. When you're down, you want to score points with the oh. clock stop. You got to make your free ones. But they got the right idea. Punch the ball inside or take the ball off the dribble. And have a chance to maybe get some three point plays or at worst end up on the free throw line with the clock stop and you trying to score some points, trying to get yourself inched back into this game. Bobby Cycli, two out of five from the free throw line after that one. He's got 12 in the game. And the Bulls turn it over off the inbounds pass. And well, there's another one of those proper things that you should do when you're behind. You extend your defense. They've been doing it intermittently throughout the game they really need to do it now they extended it all the way down to the baseline got themselves a turnover Miami with a chance at three points this trip cycling oh. operating on Purdue well that's something I thought that they should have incorporated into things that they were doing offensively earlier in the game Ronnie cycling was rather passive throughout most of this game DJ Armstrong leaves it for Pippen Horace Grant, the offensive rebound, and a foul call. There's that 18-pound medicine ball that he went up to shoot because it was a huge restriction here. Watch the force on his shoulder. The ball's going to go inside, and the reason this guy is so good is that he is so strong. Now watch here. Look, how can he get up there? Because he lifts weights with Al Vermeil. They're weight training, brother of Dick Vermeil. Horace Grant shooting the free throws well. Three for three tonight, 13 points. And the Chicago lead back to 17 with 6.25 remaining. If the Bulls maintain, Jordan may not be back. Recycling inside on Grant. And will Purdue the rebound and a crowd. Scotty Pippen. And Steve Smith runs out at it. 14 to shoot. Hanson to Armstrong, guarded by Rice. Here's Purdue on the handoff to Armstrong. Hanson with three on the clock. Force up over Shaw. And there should have been a 24 second violation, I think. Did that shot touch anything? I don't think so. They reset it. Cycli has fouled out of the game as a result. No one is contesting it. The entire coaching staff of the Miami Heat simply is sitting there allowing the non-call on the 24 second to just go by the by. Let's take a look at it before I get too accusatory here. Air ball. 
Oh, it might have grazed the bottom of the glass. Might have. They, I guess the Miami Heat bench had a better look at it. Than yeah, you're right, Dick. They're over there uh, by that basket. Yeah, sorry, fellas. Will Purdue at the line. He Two me. shots for Purdue. It's been an adventure for Will Purdue at the free throw line in the regular season. And the adventure continues. Well, let's take a look. We're being critical here of the Miami Heat coaching staff. I don't know. Well, I guess it did catch the Looks bottom like of the backboard did. there, yeah. They had a good look at it. So Purdue splits him. He's got nine. It's double his regular season average. His 18-point lead for the Bulls, the largest. Shaw guarded by Armstrong. Hanson runs out at Smith. Shaw from the perimeter. Brian Shaw has 12. Hanson is trapped. It's knocked loose, but Horace Grant, he's there again to save the day for the Bulls. Look at this Heat team scratching and clawing, hanging in there, playing proudly, challenging shots. Purdue the offensive rebound. Will Purdue with 11. He's got six rebounds and three blocks. Pretty solid performance for Purdue. Chicago really played the high pick and roll well that time. Turned the dribbler back. Never developed. Steve Smith trying to get free baseline and a foul called on Hanson. Fourth team foul on Chicago. 4.38 remaining fourth quarter. It is a 102 to 84 lead for the Bulls. Smith for three. Book it. I mean, this guy is going to be some kind of player in this league. Miami 5 for 12 from three point country. We got an offensive foul called on Purdue, who was. Making the catch and delivering the pass at the same time. Two fouls on Purdue. 99 61, New York over Detroit in the fourth. I think we can safely say the Knicks lead that series one game tonight. 4 12 remaining. Shaw over Armstrong. Another three. Ryan Shaw. Brings Miami to within 12. Miami this year has been beautifully coached by Kevin Lockery. He's done a marvelous job. They're doing all the right things. They're coming down. They're trying to hit threes. They're still playing defense. They're not giving up. And the offensive end, when they can't get their threes up, they try to get the ball inside, try to get themselves on the free throw line, score some points with the clock stop. Extend their defense. Shaw against Armstrong runs him off on a grand long screen and a foul call. DJ Armstrong picks up the foul. Well, tomorrow on TNT at 11 a.m., the Saturday shootout featuring Westerns all afternoon. The conquest of Coach Heath's gun fury in the Devil's Doorway. And then inside the NBA. NBA basketball. And creature features all night long. Monsters. We're in the city of Monsters of the Midway. Well, so we've had a monster fitting. performance by Michael Jordan tonight. He took the uh, the uh, Chicago Bulls. He put them on their shoulder, on his shoulders, and said, "Guys, I will carry you through this little early swagger we had, this little doldrum that we were in, and I'll get you out of it. And then we'll take a little rest and get ready for Game Two, which will be on Sunday afternoon here. That's his Purdue and." Giddy up, Brian Shaw. So the reason you're going to have this little giddy up performance here is because of a good head and shoulder fake by Will Perdue. And look at everybody move over there, including Will Perdue, trying to help out and want to see anybody get hurt. Now this is as fine a game, perhaps, as Will Perdue has played for the Bulls this season. Now it's not. Equal offensively to his season high of 16 points, but he 
Yes, would have been a real factor. He's got 13 points in the game. Well, I get to see Chicago a lot. I live here, and I've watched this guy develop. He's a very serious-minded basketball player. He hopes that he's the center of the future for the Chicago Bulls, and he's preparing himself. Shaw went a long way without a dribble. Pippen comes out with it. The Bulls with Jordan and Paxson. The starting backcourt back in there with 2.52 remaining. Jordan to Pippen. Purdue on the tip. 15 for Purdue. I believe his playoff career high is 16. And a timeout taken. 2.37 remaining. It's at 20, so we'll be keeping it here with the Bulls in front by 16. Well, J.D., if there's a hidden reason why the Chicago Bulls are as successful as they are it might have to do with the fact that they don't get injured very much full timeout 237 left Chicago 106 and Miami 90 tomorrow night at 6 Eastern Seattle Golden State then the Nets and the Cleveland Cavaliers New Jersey Gave the Cavs a real struggle last night. Here early, Miami gave the Bulls a struggle. You know, you were talking before the break, Dick, about the Bulls and how relatively injury-free they have been, not just this year, but last year as well. In fact, this year they had a few more injuries. Well, they're an organization that takes pride in avoiding injuries, and for the second year in a row, they're one of the least injured teams in the NBA. In their championship year, they only missed 20 games due to player injury, only 45 this year, and Bill Cartwright missed 28 of those. You know, in comparison, the Washington Bullets now missed 281. <laughs> Purdue slots it away. It's fourth block. Jordan looking inside. It's Grant. Now Jordan from the outside. Brian Shaw, the Heat rebound. Inside of two minutes left in game one. Glenn Rice around the pick by Alan Ogg. And he is fouled. Rice to shoot two. In the playoffs, when two teams are playing each other and there's all this dissecting and bisecting because you are playing in a five game series or a seven game series, look for subtle changes. One of the changes that you might expect in game two of this series is for Kevin Lockery to maybe play Glenn Rice at the small forward. He told us today when he plays the small forward, he has a tendency to take the ball to the basket a little bit more. Really today, Glenn Rice played a one-dimensional game. That drive that you saw him take, which ended him up on the free throw line, was one of the first ones that he took all night. Yes, he was in early foul trouble, but I think he needs to add that dimension to that beautiful jump shot that he has. It's a 14 point lead for the Bulls this trip with a minute 40 left. That score you saw Detroit losing to the Knicks. 109 75. We're told that that is the lowest offensive output by the Pistons in the playoffs. Michael Jordan has 44. Well, if there was a name for that dunk, I'd call it the sandwich dunk. It was located directly between two people, soared into the air between them. The baloney came out of the sandwich and dunked the ball. Rice being picked up by Horace Grant. The three try by Rice is short. Jordan throwing ahead to Grant. Horace Grant with 15. Now it's Jordan again coming up with a steal. Paxson to Jordan for the finish. 46. One of the men who holds the NBA playoff record for points in a game. Jordan the rebound is 11th. He's got nine assists. Okay, this is mop up time. This is the crowd time. But look at Kevin Lockery. Cool as can be. I've been here 62 times. This is only one game. We played pretty darn well. I'm going to be talking to you guys about it when I get down to that locker room. No basket for Will Purdue. He will be shooting two, however. John Sorrell.
Sunbold on the foul. Jordan out of the game now, and he will not get the triple double. But he had a Michael Jordan like night in getting the Bulls pointed in the right direction. And it was the flood of Michael Jordan that proved to be the demise of the Miami Heat on this night. The flood of points. Right. It was a flood of points. Will Purdue shooting for a new playoff career high with his second free throw. Pippen getting a hand as he heads out with 33.8. Again, the Miami Heat really, really played well. They've got to be very proud of how they played. And the Miami Heat is going to be a much more confident team in game two on Sunday and an incredibly more confident team when they get back to the Miami Arena. Where earlier this year they played the Bulls a two-point game. 21.1 remaining. Sunbold off the inbounds, hitting the side edge, and Purdue another rebound. The Bulls can freeze it out. Uh-uh. Scott Williams for three. He knew where it was going to end up. He went for his own rebound and lost it out of bounds. So Miami with it. 6.8 left. And the Heat are going to let it run out. John Morton for three. We've had a foul call, I believe. Or did we? Wait a minute. Had a foul call. Chicago personal foul, 20, Bobby Hansen. It's on Bobby Hansen. Are they going to shoot the free throws? They are. They're going to uh, beckon John Morton back to the free throw line. As we see Kevin Lockery, proud of his team. And we have Michael Jordan heading over to talk to us. So the Bulls step out with a game one victory. It was a, uh, a little struggle for Chicago, but uh, thanks to Michael Jordan, as we mentioned, he got them going in the right direction, and they were able to cruise in for the win tonight and move on ahead in this series. One game to none. The free throws by Morton now give us the final score of 113 to 94. Well, the final score was rather lopsided, but it was a much closer game than that, especially so in the first half. And we've asked Bulls guard Michael Jordan to stop by and visit with us here on the post game show. Michael, I mentioned at the end of the game that uh, you guys got off to a sluggy start, but um, you got them pointed in the right direction. You sensed that your team needed some offense from you, and you were certainly able to deliver. Well, I can sense everybody was a little nervous, even though we tried to be as confident as possible coming into the game because it's a lot of high expectations here in Chicago. Chicago because of what we did last year and what we've done in the regular season. So I think the shots were a little light, a little tight, you know, long shots, short shots. So, you know, I took my leadership in, in terms of offense to try to loosen things up. Is it more difficult to defend a title or to win it the first time? You know, I think it's really fun because uh, the expectations are there and the challenges are there. So you can't fall asleep. You got to step on the court and be ready to play. I thought I detected uh, on the countenances of your teammates and maybe even you a little swagger maybe some preconceived notions about this team that you were playing. It is after all their first entrance into the playoffs. It is and you try to use that as a motivational factor use the first game as some type of a message to send if possible that it's not going to be as easy as they may think and it's going to be a tough series and hopefully we can keep things going. Well I thought that. Uh, it looked like there was a little overconfidence on, on, on the Chicago Bulls part and it looked like you sensed it and you said let me set an example here and uh, you had that one dunk. <laughs> I told him if, if the if that dunk had a force meter on it it would have broken it. Yeah I guess that was true. I mean and it's hard to come in and try to take this team likely you got to you know it's a little swaggered in, involved especially with our reputation preceding us a little bit but uh, somehow you got to play through it you know and hopefully this first game is out the way we can kind of settle down to more uh, evenly played games. Well, there's no question you got the ship right <laughs> so far. MJ, all the best. Thanks, guys. All right. We'll be back in Chicago Stadium in a moment. Chicago pulling away to win going away and take a one to nothing lead in this series. Tonight's Budweiser player of the game, Michael Jordan. What a night. 46 points, 11 rebounds, 9 assists, and he was 21 out of 34 from the field. Well, he had an electric game. There's no question about it. He felt that he needed to step up because his team started rather sluggishly. And the reason that he had this explosive night was because he felt they needed some inspiration, and he gave it to them. 
NBA playoff action continues on TNT. The Los Angeles Clippers and the Utah Jazz. For Dick Versace, this is Jim Durham saying good night from Chicago Stadium.